when he said that you are not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And because of that, everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ is living before you. And so we ask that you, not only as the God of the living, but as the living God, we ask that you would be profoundly present with each one of us this morning, and especially with Jedediah. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing along the So I was going to say a few, few remarks. Um, I wanted to uh, thank you guys first off for coming. Um, it really, really means a lot that you guys come out. Um, I wanted to share some about what um, uh, what I uh, learned from my dad. He taught me two things directly and, and two things indirectly. He taught me um, taught me how to drive a stick. Because uh, that 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 was uh, not till grad school that I, I got my first car, inherited the VW bus from my grandma, um, and uh, he taught me that if you have Coke cans and you want to freeze them or Pepsi, you want to get them really cold, really fast, put them in the freezer for about five minutes, and don't put them in there for thirty. <laughs> um, he, indirectly, he, um, I was reflecting that uh, uh, on the uh, Psalms, uh, zeal for your house will consume me. And he was very committed um, to doing everything um, that, that he felt Christ called him to. Uh, he, uh, we, we grew up in this commune where everyone is sharing everything in common where they are uh, where they're giving up of themselves uh, and the idea is that you don't hold anything on as your own except like the toothbrush and stuff like that um, but uh, and he, he wasn't the only one certainly my mom as well but um, that was something he was constantly thinking about constantly preaching constantly that was his ideal that we should live like the church did in Acts 2 and Acts 4. Uh, the same with, um, I'm very excited our new Pope has chosen the name of Francis, uh, the patron saint of, of uh, our community in a way too. Um, and uh, we, uh, the idea that we should always live in Holy Sister Poverty, giving everything we have uh, away so that we can rely on God more. And that was really how he lived his life that was he felt that, that was what you're supposed to do um, and the other thing was always adapt to the culture that you're in that was that that's the way you show love to people um, we had that movie brother and sister moon which is somewhat historical life about the life of st. Francis uh, and we had the sheep the band uh, touring in Europe when they were in Finland, they were singing Finnish. Um, they were, um, at, we, we had a musical and, um, that my d dad was using his theatrical background to, um, to have a musical that connected with people in Europe back in the, in the early 70s uh, that could say this is what Christ is about in a way that they could understand not just 
the church music, but in a way they connected to. And later on, with the rock band's um, servant uh, that we had, that was part of our community touring around, it was always the idea: how do we connect with people? How do we say not from our Christian culture in America or Canada, but how do we say in their culture in a way that we love them and that Jesus loves them? And um, those things, those things are important to me now because of, again, he's not the only one, but the, he was he was the one who I heard preaching that the most in his in his words and his life, and um, so. I wanted to share just that. And now I believe we have a poem. I will read a burial song in the language of his, of his fathers in Finnish. This is Hautalaulu by Eidolein. Levoton on virta ja vierivä laine, meri yksin suuri ja meri ihanainen. Nuku virta helmassa mere. Tuuli se kulkee ja lentävi lehti. Onnellinen on se, ken laaksohon ehti. Nuku lehti helmassa laakso. Päivä se nousee ja sammuvi tähti. Ei se iäks sammu, ken elämästä lähti. Nuku lehti, nuku tähti helmassa päivä. None of us here really knew Jim, with the exception of Jedediah and Susan. Um, I never met the man, although I realized a couple weeks ago that our paths might have inadvertently crossed about 30 years ago at a servant concert in Kelowna, British Columbia. <laughs> I, maybe uh, Jim was running around the background orchestrating things. Maybe you were there too, Jedediah, trying to um, make a nuisance of yourself or whatever is going on. Um, it's a small world when you think of how you uh, cross paths at times. But, but still, in the end, my only real encounter with Jim has really been through Jedediah and also what I came across in Wikipedia. And you know, as I read that article, I was amazed. I had no idea about Jim. And he was uh, an amazing man. Um, one of the founders and great leaders of the early Jesus people movement and as such he had an incredible impact upon the kingdom of God. There are many people who are following the Lord now so much because of Jedediah's death and the impact he had on their lives. Um, I imagine there are a lot of stories that are floating around that would be good to be able to hear someday. But like all of us, Jim was also a very human. Someone who, as I said, like each one of us, had his own share of flaws and faults. Like all of us, there were times issues in his life that he didn't always come to grips with. And unfortunately, sometimes woes also affected people as much as the great things in his life that we um, look back upon. And so one of the questions that, as I was reading up, one of the questions that was being asked is, what do we do with Jim Palliseri? I found myself asking, what do I say about James? A man I don't really know all that much, very much at all. What do I say, especially in a morning like this? And as I thought and I prayed a lot about that, my mind kept on going back to David, a man who was not unlike Jim in so many ways. Um, passionate, bold, determined to serve his king and master, the very things that uh, Jed, you shared with us about your father this morning. But David was also a man with a dark side, and, and to be honest, far darker than Jim. For all his greatness, for all the things that there were to admire in David, there were at times things that would creep up that were deeply disturbing and terribly frightening. 
Uh, there were issues that David never dealt with in his life. Issues that had a negative impact upon his leadership as a king, upon uh, being a husband, and upon being a father. And yet, in spite of all of his failings, everything for David, we find that David was a man who kept running back to God. He was desperate for God's mercy, hungering for his forgiveness, and above all, he longed for God's love. In all of his struggles, David so much wanted to know God, and to know him deeply, and to serve him faithfully. And so the verdict of scripture upon David was that in the end, he was a man after God's own heart. And when it comes to Jim, from what we know, I know of Jim, and from what we've heard and what we've seen, in spite of all that was going on in his own heart, the same was true. James was a man after God's own heart. And so this morning, we gather together to bury the physical remains of Jim Palisari. And, and as we do, it's inevitable that memories are going to come back, many of them good memories. You've shared some of them. And those are what we hold on to and we cherish. But we have to be honest. As we stand at the graveside for anyone, there are also those memories that might be a little difficult, might be a little painful, things that we have regrets over. But whatever these memories might be, however we are able to face them all, we do so with the knowledge of what Jesus told Lazarus, Martha at the grave of her brother Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The day is coming when the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We will be with the Lord together for all eternity. Jedediah, you and your dad, side by side, maybe talking about that Volkswagen once again, sharing about the things that you learned from him. And the other the thing about that is that on that day, as you stand <clears throat> together, your dad, all that your dad wished that he could have been for you and for everyone else. He will be all of that on that day, just as you will be all that you long to be. You will both find those longings fulfilled before the one who will have saved you both fully, body, soul, and spirit. That's how the final chapter of your lives together are going to unfold. And it's a chapter that will never end. And so, as we commit the remains of James Polisari, not just to the ground, but to the God of the living, the one who created him and who one day will resurrect him, we affirm the words of scripture and we declare with confidence, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. We've asked Louisa if you will play for us Amazing Grace, and we know the words, so let's join in together and let's sing this. Amazing Grace.
together. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your precious, eternal, and unchanging word. We thank you that you are to us the rock of ages and the great I am, the resurrection and the life. In the midst of our regrets and sorrow, we thank you for your supernatural peace, comfort, and grace. In the face of death, we thank you for your gift of eternal life. In the face of separation, we thank you for the eternal reunion we so eagerly look forward to. And we thank you for Jim's life here on this earth. And even more, that the remains that lie before us will one day, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, be gathered together and resurrected into a glorious new body. And that on that day, when Jim's spirit and body are united again, we will once more be together but even more, be able to cry out triumphantly before you, hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. And so while we await that day, we pray for Jedediah and other members of his family, that they will know your comforting presence in their lives and your strength and power to live today in the hope of that future and certain day that is to come. And all of this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. For those who are interested, uh, we are going to go to um, Cedars of the Lebanese place to gather for a uh, meal. They've opened up early that we can purchase uh, meals there if you like. Uh, and uh, to remember or uh, face the page, fake patron saint of Finland, Saint Erho. <laughs> so a fitting day for the memorial uh, and uh, so we go to celebrate there